Well, welcome everyone. And uh, we're excited now to talk with Yolanda Frazier. She is with Recover Me. Um, and she's going to share a little bit about what she's doing here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, as well as, you know, uh, I'm sure open to national, uh, national connections here. So welcome, Yolanda. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm getting my bearings. You know, it's been a tough year, but I feel like I'm coming out of the storm, so to speak. Well, very good. Well, I know that you and I uh, both sharing in this Dallas Fort Worth, you know, it's like this, you know, dance almost. Okay, can we go out? Okay, now we need to go <laughs> two steps forward, one step back and, and uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing and uh, in the ministry and the support and all of the things that you kind of have your hand in. And then we'll kind of open it up to uh, how it, this has impacted you guys. Well, that's awesome. Well, my name is Yolanda Frazier again, and I am a therapist. I do counseling, um, especially for women, uh, women who are dealing with depression, anxiety, and surprisingly grief. I've been getting a lot of grief clients and that sort of shifted my focus because I think this whole pandemic, it's really been helpful for me to help business owners and help leaders and mamas just really reframe this as something that's, this is a grief. This is a period of grief for our country in so many levels. So that's been helpful for me um, to kind of put it in that context for me as well as my clients. Yes. Yes. Well, you're right. And you bring such a, an interesting perspective on, on, you know, this time that it has been a, a, a grief or a mourning period for a lot of people. Maybe they have lost a job. Yes. Uh, maybe they had someone that was sick, which we literally just got back from a funeral. Um, that is my, my husband's side of the family who, who thought they had COVID. They ended up, it was cancer yeah. and uh, didn't get, you know, caught because they kept getting all these false, false, um, negatives are the negatives thinking that they you know were down this one path now you're he's was isolated in a hospital you know and then unfortunately you know did not did not recover um and so could, can we even have a funeral so not only literal death that people have had to experience but the sickness and being isolated you know could also be a situation they're dealing with loss of the job loss of family member, um, just loss of the normal that they knew. And now we've got, we really have to, uh, re there's a period of recovery. Yes. And I think that to put it in recovery um, mode, grief recovery, because, I, you know, when it first broke out, it was this global international effect and it affected Americans in such a way that we were never used to. We're the land of the free, yes. <laughs> you know, and so to, to force us um, and not getting into the, the, the political, just to force us to be home, whether it's safe or not, it put uh, us in a place where we had to reflect mm -hmm. and we began to, as a nation, begin to really evaluate our lives and, and that Inter internal evaluation, um, whether we wanted it or not, was interrupted by all this external stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, like you said, loss of job, loss of loved ones. And then we have this racial unrest, you know, that was always there, but it it was like, you know, if you have it a child- the surface in a whole yeah. way, right? And we're exhausted. Mm -hmm. And and I was, just, I was just thinking about how we can really get our bearings and, and come from a place of, of peace before we even address some of this stuff. Because it's not sustainable to, you know, be inundated with, am I doing this right? Am I, I need to be with this cause. I need to be with this cause. And, and we really got to get quiet and settle down our spirits and say, okay, what do I need to do for my business? How do I need to grieve my loved ones? Because society says, go, 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 do this. Don't you care about this agenda? And then you wind up feeling guilt on top of the grief. Yeah. So that's where Recover Me comes in because I don't want to get lost in the hard stuff. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. well, well, you, you bring up some good points. I think we as Americans and, you know, we are used to going, going, going and, you know, we don't rest. We don't take care of ourselves, our bodies. We're literally women burning the candle at both ends. You know, we're trying to take care of everybody and we get left. And then all of a sudden we had to stop we had to halt and we had to stay inside. We had to really deal with some of those things that probably needed to be dealt with, but it definitely, uh, you know, brought that, that unrest or just the abnormal. And then, you know, the turmoil, like we were just a, it, it now in all of these turmoils of, of business of, um, like you said, you know, just the world and the impact that was, was going on. Um, there's just so much uh, to deal with and people either shut down, right? <laughs> they literally physically and mentally shut down um, or they react in a way that, that may not uh, come from a place of peace as you yes. mentioned. So, so am I getting hearing you right that first we really have to deal at the core with getting to a peaceful place. Yes, we have to get to a peaceful place. And I think that starts with recognizing um, that we have to be compassionate towards ourselves yeah. first. You know, of course we ought to love others. Of course we're supposed to care about the George Floyd situation. Of course we're supposed to think about the people who've lost their jobs. But if I don't have mm -hmm. compassion for myself, I'm not going to feel the need to give myself permission to rest. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to, you know, really look at my house and say, oh my goodness, it's a mess. I need to reorganize some things. And I really think that once we're self-compassionate, you know, loving our neighbor as we love ourselves, then, you know, you sit down and you're trying to be creative and you're trying to think of an idea, but you're busy, you're busy. But it's really when you are in that place of rest, it comes. And so that's the first step, being compassionate to oneself. Yes, and that yes. could come in many ways. You know, it could come through getting back to the paintbrushes, getting back to the basics, you know, those, those things that you enjoy to do. You know, I started a garden during this pandemic because I needed to, to be in control of something. Yes. <laughs> you know, so just getting to that place of peace and self-compassion for myself and then the creative ideas come. And then I could think about, oh my goodness, goodness my business has suffered. Maybe I can, maybe I can be creative in this way. Maybe I connect with this one, connect with can connect with this woman. And so as women, we know how to be creative and we know how to hustle hard. But when we're dealing with grief, our typical coping mechanisms don't work. Mm -hmm. So we have to go inward versus outward. Because oh, yeah. a lot of times we have mental breakdowns and we have physical breakdowns. And I was one of those people until I said, no way, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this my way. Because when you're a people pleaser, when you care about others, you just want to you know, yeah, you're, yeah. we're conditioned as women sometimes to think about the other person. And, and that's true. I believe in giving back, but it starts with finding ourselves and, and, and recovering ourselves, basically. Well, you're right, Yolanda. I mean, as you're speaking here and you talk about, you know, a, a great, a great scripture that says, um, love others as you love yourself. And so it does start that that's not a place, not, not coming out of a selfish place. It's mm -hmm. coming out of, it's like, put the mask on yourself before you can help others, you know, on the plane, there's a reason if we're not taking care of ourselves, we can't, what, what value, what good are we to other people? Um, and then it doesn't stop with just loving ourselves. <laughs> you know, that can mm -hmm. be, you know, people are like, oh, now all of a sudden the pride comes in. So it really is yes. to care of ourselves so that we have a place of abundance that we can take care of other people and, and be compassionate. And you, you mentioned whatever gives you peace, whatever gives you rest. So it might be a, pl a time to take a little bit of a, a pause and say law and go, okay, you know, I get rest when I get up early and I get to walk or I get to put some wonderful music on, or I light a candle and, you know, I get to read uh, something that's inspiring. I mean, when you, when you think about people that are recovering, um, where, how do they get that healing? Yes. Yes. And they get that healing, um, you know, externally. I think about the time I had a brain injury several years ago, I had to go to therapy every day. 
you know, and I work with this physical therapist who made me walk rain, <laughs> rain, snow, sleet. He didn't, he said, I don't care. We're going to go along this pond and it, I don't care how slow you go, you go, but we're going to go. So sometimes we need that mentorship, you know, um, we need that peer mentorship to say, Hey, how did you do today? Yes. Hey, did you, did, did you come up with a new, did you adjust your business plan? Um, did you contact that person who you, you think might be a good fit for your organization or your business? So I think we have to come alongside of women and partner. And I think that's hard for us to do it is. You know, at times. But the people who recover from grief, it's usually not alone. Yes, you're absolutely right. I think that if we can get there faster, we only know what we know. We've only experienced what we've experienced. So now getting out of ourselves and saying, hey, I need some help. Um, not being too prideful to ask for that and to understand we're more powerful together when we, we're stronger together, when we can work together and, and we can solve more problems together, um, I think is huge. And, you know, Yolanda, you talk about even the um, the tension, like the racial tension that has has surfaced, and and you know I I obviously uh, you know can't even come to understand at a core. But what can I do as um, uh, you know myself, maybe a woman business owner that that cares to the deepest level, like so many people do, but we feel like it's hard to relate. I mean. Speak into me, speak into the people that are, are listening. I mean, what could you empower us to do where we can make a difference at a whole nother level? Yes, I think two things are important. I think to finish up the, the thought process we had before, we have to go internally and grieve our own losses. Okay. I cannot grieve your losses. I can't enter into your grief, you know, unless I dealt with some of my griefs of the past. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If I've had daddy issues, if I've had uh, a first marriage that ended badly, I need to really grieve those losses, you know? And, and I think sometimes when we, you know, I know a lot of people of color, um, minorities say they don't understand. And I think it's because number one, obviously, you know, you have to be, uh, you know, you have to walk in someone's shoes to know that. But I think a lot of times what's considered racism or prejudice, people haven't dealt with their own stuff. Yeah. You know, that's why we hear when I'm in round tables or church events, you hear people say, well, my family was an immigrant and they came from, you know, Italy and they worked hard. Right. And, and, and they're not understanding that it's different right it's different we didn't come over as immigrants we came over shackled in the bottom of you know not uh, by choice right exactly and so therefore the healing that needs to happen is just to listen mm -hmm. i think i think when someone sees you i don't know if you've been through a difficult time or you know where you had some shame and could not talk about it and that one person that called and say, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. well, I know you smiled tonight. It's I know your life. house was beautiful, but they saw you. I think for me as a woman of color, um, I think when I have friends uh, who say, how is it impacting you? You know, and I, and I could just recall and talk about things. That's the first step because yes. I think in our exhaustion from the pandemic, our exhaustion for everything that's going on. And plus it's an election year. Could you imagine? Yeah, let's these, just pile it, right? <laughs> let's just pile it. So everything is being politicized and yeah. that's the, and that's the caution. I want to mm -hmm. caution people, you know, and that's why I think that you say, what do we do after we grieve our losses? We have to think about listening and then what is one small step that yeah. I can sustain and versus doing everything. You know, I see organizations, let's get these round tables, let's do that. And they're talking and, and, and some of it's good, but a lot of it's going to fizzle out. So, but if one person, I think about the Underground Railroad with Harriet Tab Tubman, mm -hmm. you had wonderful people who were non-Black who said, I can't get out there and say anything. I can't get out there and do anything, but guess what? I can hide a slave in my house. 
Mm -hmm. So just really think about what's the one thing that I can do that's sustainable. Yes. And that may be, uh, I was talking to an a Indian um, American client that I have, and he's a and he's a tax accountant. So he's doing some stuff for, you know, um, African American and minority and women small businesses. He's given a great discount. So even in our everyday work, it doesn't have to be, let's go out there and protest, even though that's great. But what can I do with my resources and this time that some of us are having? What can I do? You know, there's lots of stuff in the DFW in America where you can volunteer, um, become a mentor and a home, you know, to a home or a facility with young, you know, young, young adults, or it's, it's just exciting. So I think, you know, after we've truly grieved, we can see the seeds of light, the seeds mm -hmm. of hope. Mm -hmm. And that's where, where it really happens. I just caution everyone to the reaction. Mm. Yeah. You know? Well, here's what I'm hearing. I'm literally taking notes and, and, uh, what I'm hearing you say is like, you know, deal with the root first. And that may be like the grieving that we did not give ourselves, whoever we are opportunity to do, like deal with the core root area. It's like pull the weed um, because otherwise we're just trying to solve an effect and uh, you're not ever dealing with you know, the main issue. It's, it's almost like your, your indicators as you're driving and, Oh, I need an oil chain. Let me just put a band aid on that. I'll ignore it so that it will go away. I can't see it. It's not there, you know, and, and it's really dealing with, um, you know, what's going on. So I love that deal with your personal you know, grief and, and, and the challenges there. And then listen, like that's the next step is listen, ask questions, let people know you do care, even though you may not have the answers. I, just, I care. And I, I, I have a, a willing ear to listen and, you know, be the light, be that encouragement to them um, and take the small steps, even if it's just one thing that we can do to move us forward and, but also be committed to a more sustainable or longer, term solution not just like you know it, it's like the funeral everybody just right then jumps in and says I care maybe gives you a, a casserole but what about two weeks later what about the month later what about six months when uh, you know that grief is still still alive and and then have resources that actually build you know and I know I know with us um we have our, our group uh that that within our company and we said what can we do and we literally started building these little uh, video modules um, that that can be used for people that are in um, you know any situation if it's a halfway house or they're on their road to recovery and they just never had somebody speak something into them maybe a mother or a father figure so we just started building these little resources and it it's like over time you know and it'd be just something that people can can um, hop on and have a word of encouragement. And it's like, what can we do? But first, like you're saying, deal with your own grief so that you can be a resource, a tool, a, a, a hope, a, a light to someone. It's what I see the most and it's what, you know, um, we do individually. If you've ever been to counseling, you know, this time it's, it's me, you know, this time it's me. Usually a crisis brings people into counseling, um, but crises are good because it's saying that I can't do this now. And then usually something is birthed that's wonderful because we reevaluate. And a lot of times we change directions and that's sometimes what that crisis is meant you know, to teach us. Well, and, and it's like the pressures applied or we grow in those difficult, challenging times of our life because it really shows us who we are. <laughs> Sometimes we're so proud. We're like, why did I react that way? I need to dig deeper. And, yes. and I love that. I love what you're doing. And, and, um, you know, as we, as we do some final thoughts here, give Give some encouragement to those, if you don't mind, that are, are maybe dealing with the struggle. Uh, maybe they can't afford counseling. They, like, yes. what, what is one thing that they can do um, that's, that can get them on that path? Well, I think the one thing that they can do is I love my journal here. Oh. I think 
that's a great place to start. Um, it organizes your thoughts and it's a good place that I write down my feelings, I write down my thoughts. And there's so many great resources. Um, I love this website, www.selfcompassion.org. It's done by this um, woman named Dr. Kristen Neff and she's out of UT Austin. And she really brings self-compassion and has a lot of great resources. There's great free meditations there. They're not weird and spooky and new agey. You're just great for just organizing your day and clearing your mind, yeah. you know. So counseling is not the only way to healing. It's just one way to healing. Yeah. Um, and I think that that morning ritual, regardless of it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes of walking, I like to do prayer walks. I like to journal. I like to listen to some meditation and then I start my day. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a lot of nonprofits, um, Christian nonprofits that offer um, free or just low cost counseling. And I have that um, on my Facebook page. So um, that would be great, you know, to, to visit that Facebook page mm -hmm. and you can get all that information there. Yeah, it will. Uh, two things that I love about you, Yolanda, and that is your your amazing voice, the calm, right? The, you, you have such a calm, uh, which I think all of us could slow down and like say, you know, am I calm in the storm, uh, even with my voice? And then your, your beautiful smile, because when you have a calming voice and a beautiful smile, that that's where people gravitate to. You become that safety net. You become the, the place that people want, uh, you know, to go and, and, and hang on and, and take part of that with them. And so uh, I think that's beautiful and it's beautiful for uh, your ministry, uh, your, your Recover Me. And so tell people how they can get to your uh, Facebook page, maybe a website or what are the resources and um, how they can connect with you? Yes. Well, it's simple. It's Yolanda Frazier, F-R-A-S-E-R, LCSW, Recover Me Support. And you can find me on Facebook. And um, I'm going to be uh, publishing a book that's coming out August 1st. Wonderful. And, uh, Let us yeah. know. Oh, yes. my goodness. We yes. will love to spread the word for sure. Yes. And then, then I'll be launching my website and some fun, fun things. And you, you mentioned about that calm and that the smile that you see that comes out of a place of real pain. Mm -hmm. And so just being real yeah. and, and, but realizing that there's real joy when you can just say, I have to be vulnerable. You know, you know how grief happens. It happens to you. You yeah. don't plan for a person to die. You don't plan for your business to say, oh, I don't need you anymore. And you, you just have to face it gently, mm -hmm. right? We have to gently do it with self-compassion. And I would just love to, you know, connect with you again. And this was such a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's so great. Well, my big thing uh, takeaway is literally get true healing. Like we have to get true healing um, in our lives through things. Um, like you said, some things we can't even plan for, but we've got to deal with them, get that true healing so we can have that peace that surpasses all understanding. Absolutely. We're living in chaos and chaos is around us. Be the hope. Um, have that that calming voice, that smile, and uh, and continue to do the work, right? Continue to do the work um, on our lives so that we can truly help others. Uh, yes. It comes out of a genuine place. So I love it. And um, and Yolanda, hopefully we can connect in person yes. uh, sometime soon. Let us know about the book and we will definitely love to get that out uh, to our, our, our uh, audience here. And we just uh, pray blessing over you, your ministry, what you guys are doing and uh, the impact that you're making that you don't even know about this side, right? Like how amazing is that? you get to be part of, of that. And uh, we appreciate you. Oh, well, I appreciate you too. And, and likewise, just the fact that you have a, a certain focus, but you are inclusive yeah. of many different mental health, emotional health. And I pray blessings and wish you nothing but the best in your endeavors. Well, thank you.